Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the Natural Magic uh, Fox Painting Tutorial for the Barracks Box for Kids. Um, I'm really excited. Before we get started though, I just want to make sure that everyone has an idea of how this is going to work, okay? Um, what you want to do is make sure you have all your materials together. So the materials that you need are going to be um, the little containers wrapped in green tape. They were, they were taped into the corner of your box. Okay, so you need all of those. I would ask a parent to help you because sometimes the, the tape sticks and the lids pop off and then it makes a mess. So make sure you ask for help, okay? Um, you're also going to need your magic marker, your pencil, and your paintbrush, okay? Plus something to paint on. And we're gonna work on this nice square canvas. Okay, um, so if you don't have all those things together, you might want to just pause the video, okay, uh, get everything together, and then just push play again. While you're doing that, you should also make sure that you're in a space, I'll just show you my space, that can get dirty, okay, because this ink stuff that we're working with can stain, and I don't want it to get anything that's not supposed to get dirty, dirty. Okay, that way um, here there's no big deal when it comes to a mess, but just make sure you're working in a space that you can get messy. Make sure you're wearing clothes that you can get messy too, okay? So if you need to move or you need to get changed or you need to grab some materials, make sure you grab all those materials. And the one other thing that you need that I didn't include in the box is just a little container for some water to wash your brush and maybe a napkin or a rag because that will help um, dry your brush off in between steps. Okay, so take a little pause if you need to. If not, let's get started. Okay, so for our first step, we need to draw this beautiful fox. Okay, so you want to start with your pencil. Okay, and what I'm going to suggest, we're going to make some lines on here. If you make a mistake, don't worry about erasing them right now. Okay, We'll deal with erasing them when we're done all the drawing. Try to draw really lightly. Hardly push down on the, pen, the, the canvas here. So if you look here, this is what a hard line looks like. I'm pressing really, really hard. But try to be really soft. I'm going to be using hard lines to draw mine simply because it's really hard for you guys to see what I'm doing. Um, if I draw lightly, but I really encourage you try to be as gentle as you can, okay? And definitely don't push really, really hard because you could pop a hole in your canvas and it's hard to fix one of those. So what we're going to start with, which might surprise you, three circles. There's a circle right here. There's a circle right here. And there's a big circle right here, kind of like a snowman, okay? So our fox starts off as a snowman. So I'm gonna draw, oops, yeah, I made a mistake, but that's no big deal. I'm gonna draw my first circle. Then my second circle is gonna come in here. So see how it's kind of a crooked snowman? It's like someone pushed his body over, but his head, stays on top, okay? So we've got our big ball, the crooked snowball, and then the straight head snowball. From there, we're gonna turn this into a fox. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw one ear and two ear, just like that, okay? And we're not worrying about any of the details just yet, okay? We're just focusing on making it look like a fox first, and then we can add things in. We're gonna continue working with the head. And we're gonna draw a rectangle on the front of the face. Now what's interesting about this is it's already starting to look like a dog. We're just gonna make it look specifically like a fox. So from here, notice how we've got this big neck. We don't want that big neck. So you're gonna just take the bottom of that rectangle and you're gonna drag it down in a nice swooping line, okay? Then, we're gonna go back up here. See this moon shape? That moon shape, we're gonna start in the middle of the head. So we're gonna draw a little 
circle or a dot and I'm gonna swoop out and swoop back in. It almost looks like a big smile. Then I'm gonna draw another line that follows that one, but I'm gonna draw a dot underneath of it. So it's gonna go like that and then I'm just gonna draw a line up like that. Okay, now we already have this nice smooth line here. It's already drawn, but we need that little point sticking out so the other side of the fox's head, okay? And then now that we know where this line is, we can draw the bottom of the front chest of our little fox, okay? Kind of a funny curve. And then draw in a little rectangle nose. And that's kind of the basic shape of the head. Okay, we already can kind of see that it looks a little bit better than just a crooked snowman. So then what we can do is I'm going to start at the top of the nose where the nose meets the head and I'm going to draw another curve and it's going to look like he's kind of wearing a mask. And then I'm going to just draw a bump and draw another curve and a bump and another curve and just stop. You should have about three. If you notice here, this one's four, but it's much bigger. Um, so just do it however you think it looks good. Now, because we have this headband here and we know where this is, we can put the eye in and the eye is just a V. Okay. Now at any point, as we're working, if you feel like I'm going too fast, that's just because my art muscles are very trained. Um, you can just pause the video. That's the great thing about this. We are not in the studio for an hour. It's not like we're at a day camp and we have only a one day or a half a day. You could take as much time as you need to. So just pause the video whenever you need to, okay? So now we have our little fox eyeball. We can put our eyeball in there. From here, we need to create the body. So all we're going to do is draw a straight line along the back, okay? We're going to draw around his bottom, okay? And look at this big sweeping tail. So at the bottom here, I'm gonna go up and down. It's just a hill, and then I'm gonna draw another hill underneath of it. And see how that's a little thin? No big deal. I'll just add another one and I'll add another one on this side until I think it looks like a nice puffy foxtail. And if you wanted it to be extra puffy, you could even add an extra one. Okay, what's ever up to you. Then we can connect the chest of our, our fox. So I'm gonna draw a squiggly line and that's kind of like the front of his arm. And then we're gonna just draw in another line there just for the rest of his chest. So from here, we have a fox shape. Now let's make it more interesting. See this big sweeping S? We're gonna put that in. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go zoop. See how it sort of follows the shape of the back? Then I'm gonna go here, zoop, just like that, okay? Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can put in eight circles. You can put in more or less if you want to. Okay. I just want to make sure. Let's see, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I only fit seven, but that's okay. So you fit in as many as you can. Then we're going to put in this nice curve here. Same thing, we're following the shape of that area. And then we're just gonna fill in some of these spaces using some of those lines that we have left. So we've got those leftover circle lines. So I'm gonna fill that one in. And all in this section, I'm just gonna draw one, two, three, four, six. So nice lines. Now, if you can't fit six, that's okay. Do as much as you can. Now in here, we're gonna sort of try to continue that line, but now we're gonna make it more of a smile than a frown. Okay, and going to the front section of the fox, we're gonna just do a little draw there, okay? 
inside our circle, I'm going to put a couple more circles. Just like that. Okay. And then here, I'm going to just take that line and continue it. So we've got that circle shape in there again. Okay. And I'm just going to fill things in a little bit, make them more interesting to look at. And you'll notice this one won't look exactly like this one. It's just about filling in the spaces the way you think it looks nice. And this is one is a little bit different shape than this one, and that's okay. The next, I'm gonna fill this area in here, just like that. Okay. And then we'll go up here and do a little bit more detail. So, I'm going to start with a V and then I'm going to draw lines on either side, just like that. And inside this area here, I'm just going to draw some lines that go through the cheeks and face. And then I'm just going to repeat those same line patterns in the ears. Okay. I can add some more circles in here. Just like that. The other thing you can do is make his tail look spiky. Okay, you can also add in some extra detail in the tail. So I'm going to just do some lines on this one. And I'm going to do some lines on that one. I think I'll do some swirls. I love swirls. Not to be confused with squirrels. I like squirrels too, but I don't want to draw squirrels inside of my fox's tail. That would be crazy. But if you want to draw squirrels inside your fox's tail, you can do that. That's, that's your art. If you do that, I'd love to see it. I think that would be pretty cool. There. Okay. So I'm done with my pencil. So whenever you're done, just put your pencil down. Maybe don't throw it like I did. Be very good to it. You need to take good care of the pencil and the marker and the brush. Because if you're getting um, the next box in July and August, you will need to use these same things. If for some reason you lose one or break one or something happens, just let me know because I will be able to replace it for you. But try to take good care of your tools. Okay? What we're going to do with the marker is we're going to outline all the lines that we just drew with our pencil. And again, take your time. I'm just gonna do the whole thing. You might notice that some of the lines you drew with the pencil are hard to fill in with the marker because your marker might be bigger than the pencil lines. And that's okay. All right, that's okay. It just means you got to adapt a little bit, change your plans a little bit. That's why art's so good. It kind of helps you learn how to just change your plan when you know it's not going to work out the way you thought it would. Just adapt. Try something new. Okay, so I've got all my swirls. I'm going to go here. Here. Being a little messy. I'm sorry. Try to be not as messy. One of the reasons that I'm being a little messy is because I've used this marker so much that the stub is wearing off and it's not as accurate for drawing as it used to be. But that's okay. Okay, now what's tricky, this is the trickiest part of this whole step, is this front area. See the circles, the original circles? We don't want to outline those original circles. So what I suggest, start under the nose and draw that line. Go under the jaw, swoop down, all the way down to the front of his little beard, 
and under and then reconnect at the nose okay you don't want to draw any of those lines then you can put in the little fox's black nose you can go back outline the head and his little cheeks and all the details even the background details those headband areas you can color in the eye black with the marker so i didn't give you um any black ink when i do these i don't generally use ink to fill any of the blackness in i just focus on the marker okay so once you have all of that that's technically um all you need to do for the drawing end of things um if you want to add more details you absolutely can i'll just show you I just felt like that might be a little bit more empty. Okay, so feel free to just add details wherever you think you need them. Okay, and then what you want to do next is maybe put these off to the side because we won't need them anymore. Um, you want to get out your paintbrush and you want to get out the three colors of paint Okay, so what everyone should have got was um, some orange paint. Okay, you're also going to want to use the blue paints. We're going to start working with the blue. To work with the blue, we're going to take our brush. Okay, I'm going to just swirl it around and I'm going to outline with just water around the outside of my fox. Do your best not to go inside the lines of the fox, okay? And don't worry about any of the pencil lines you see. Don't worry about that just yet. Okay, so I'm just going around, and you can be a little bit messy. It's okay for it to be messy on the outside, but don't don't get messy on the inside of the fox, okay? There. So then I'm going to scribble. You might see it's starting to get, the canvas is getting a little bit darker where I put the water. It might be hard for you guys to see on the, on your screens. But let's see. Okay. Now, the ink that we're working with is amazing because it'll stay very, very vibrant once it's dry. And sometimes liquid paint doesn't like to do that, okay? Okay, so as I mentioned, you're going to have two very dark containers of paint, okay? I'm just gonna squeeze mine into these little cups here. Okay, so that's, you can kind of see the color. And you might look at the containers I gave you and think that isn't enough paint for anybody. And I'll say that if this was paint, you're right, we wouldn't have enough. But because we're actually working with ink, we don't need a lot because we use more water than we use ink. Okay, so the two colors that you were given here and here, you can kind of see how this one's a little bit darker. Um, we're working with two types. We are working with a sky blue, okay? And then we're working with an ultramarine deep blue. Ooh. So this stuff is um, a conaline liquid color. This is a professional watercolor um, I wouldn't normally give to kids. Um, but the stuff that I ordered hadn't come in yet, um, which is why I want you to be extra careful. Make sure you're working in a space that you can get wet. Okay, and the other color, and I'll just mix it up now, the other color that um, everyone gets, okay, is a combination of three drops of carmine red, okay, and 30 drops of yellow. Okay, and this type of yellow is a lemon yellow, okay? And when they mix up, you're gonna get a nice orange. You can kind of see the orange there, 
okay? But we're gonna take this orange and we're just gonna move it off to the side for a minute because we don't need it. Um, I'm just gonna add a little bit of extra water around my edge, okay? Especially if you've taken a pause because you wanna get things ready and set up. You wanna make sure that the water on your canvas hasn't completely dried, okay? And this is kind of a messy step. This is the wild step. You get to be wild when you do this step. Okay. There, so I got it all watered. Now I can choose one of these two colors. It doesn't matter which one. Um, I think it would be nice to do the light blue and watch what happens. I'm gonna try to do it in a spot. As soon as my brush touches, okay, so I'm just gonna drag my brush around the edge and notice how wild and crazy the paint's going. Just let it do it. Just let it happen. Don't try to control it. If it does get inside your fox, don't even worry about it. We'll deal with that later. Okay, and just go around your whole fox with whatever blue color you like. Don't use the orange. We need the orange for inside the fox. Okay. All right. So check out. Now I'm going to wash my brush. So all I have on there is water. I'm not even going to dry it. I'm going to come and paint the edge of my paint. Okay, so I'm just running along with extra water and spreading out that ink. Okay, and then you can start to scribble. That's kind of what I call it. I dip my brush in some paint. And sometimes I'll start with some dots and then I'll take some water and I'll connect those dots or those blobs and let the ink do whatever they want. Okay, but you're just going to fill in the whole background, little dab at a time. Okay, and just start with one color. All right, I haven't used another color yet. This is just one color. And notice if you have lots of water, it gets really light. And if you use lots of paint and very little water, it's just very bright. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep using just the water. Notice I've hardly touched the ink in the last couple brush strokes because I don't need it. There's so much ink moving around here. I gave you enough that you should be able to do a couple paintings if you had some canvas or some paper at home. So you can do your canvas and maybe you could do another one as a gift or you could practice on paper the first time if you want to. Okay, so if you notice, it's getting a little light. So I'm gonna go back into the darker areas and I'm just gonna stir up some of that paint. Okay, stirring it up. Okay. And don't worry if it's really wet, okay? It dries pretty fast. The canvas will just soak it up, all up. And come back up here. I'm gonna get a little bit more paint. I think I want it to be a little darker up here, but you can do whatever you like. And see, I'm being really messy. I'm just scribbling, using some water, scribbling with some water. Whenever I feel like it needs a little bit more paint, I can just come in and do some more painting. A little bit of ink. Okay. Just keep moving around. And it's okay to do this step fast, all right? I told you, you can get wild here a little bit. And if you're like, this isn't wild at all, well, that's because the wild hasn't started yet, okay? And if you're watching this and you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's too wild for me. That's okay too. Whatever you decide to do is going to look great. That's why everybody can be an artist and be accomplished because they each have their own unique style and no one else can create that style with them. Okay. You might be able to learn how to create somebody else's style or in the style of someone else. If you've ever taken a class with me, you know we can learn to paint in all different kinds of styles. Okay. Now if you look... I've got lots of blue around here. I've got a little bit of blue up here. I think I'm gonna fill this in a little bit more. And notice how it's scribbly, but then it just settles out and kind of disappears on its own. That's okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna 
give that a minute. Now, I bet you're all wondering, what about the other color? We're gonna use that color right now. And we're gonna get really crazy now, but I'm gonna move this out of the way for a moment because we don't want to get too crazy. So I'm gonna take my brush, I made sure it's really wet. I'm gonna dip it in that blue. I'm gonna hold my finger out like a bird's gonna perch on it. And then I'm going to use my paintbrush like a little hammer and I'm gonna tap, I'm gonna tap my finger. So I'm not moving my finger. Okay, I'm just moving my brush. Okay, and you can do this as much or as little as you like. Okay, until you're like, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Kind of like what's going on over here. Now something you can try is coming at the picture, the canvas from a different angle. Okay. Now, if you're like, but I really want something really close, you have some idea where you want something to be specifically, you can just dab. That's okay too. Okay, but if you want to get really wild and crazy, that's a good way to do it. Now you'll notice I've got some blue in my fox, but that's okay. So I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to make sure it's really clean. I'm going to squeeze it out or I'm going to dry it out. And then I'm going to just come in and go over it and over it and over it with just water. And it's kind of like when you mop the floor. Okay, you might notice that it's turning my area, that front area of my fox, into a light blue, but that's really not a big deal right now. We won't have to worry about that yet. That's something we'll fix in the very last step. Okay, so from there, you can dab with a little bit of napkin, or you can use something um, like a rag. And just take that extra moisture. You can just wipe it right away. Okay. And you just want to take away the extra moisture in that spot that's supposed to be clean. And whenever you're done with the wildness, okay, um, that's it. I'm going to take a little bit more. And I think I'm just going to do some around the edges just to make it a little bit more interesting. I feel like I might not have gotten enough on the edges here. Okay. There. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to do, I'm washing that brush really well, making sure it's really wet. I'm going to hold my finger out again, and I'm going to splatter with just water. Okay, and depending on how wet your canvas is, it might make a huge difference, or it might not make a big difference at all because there's too much water. But you'll notice, I'll give it a minute. It'll start making the really inked up areas really light. Right here or down here. Okay. And that's the sort of thing that we're looking for. And what we want to do is just wait. We want to let this completely dry. Okay. So the best thing to do is just pause this. If uh, you're working outside, it won't take long to dry at all. Uh, if you're not working outside, try to find a nice window where there's some sunshine and just leave it there for a couple minutes because um, we'll paint the fox in after it's completely dry. And we wanna do that that way because if we try to do it now, all those edges are gonna to bleed together. So it's gonna make the orange bleed out into the blue and then the blue bleed out into the orange. And if you don't know what blue and orange make, they make brown. So that's not gonna look very good, but we will use that secret later to add in some brown detail down here, okay? So just let it dry, pause the video, and come back when everything's dry. Okay, so everything should be dry. You may notice that things are a little bit lighter, but it's not so bad. Now you can choose to add more if you want. And I think in my case, um, I am. So this time, I'm gonna go back, get some of that blue. I'm gonna, okay. And I don't have, the canvas is completely dry this time. So they're not going to spread out and bleed. That's what that term is called. Um, like these did. See how it looks very tie-dye in the background? These aren't going to spread out and make it look tie-dye at all. These will just sort of stay where they fall. Okay. And I'm going to wash my brush. And I'm actually going to use the first color 
that I did again, same thing. I'm going to make some blobs. Okay, and I'm still holding out my finger like a little perch. Okay, and I'm going to come back and splatter with just water because some of these will touch the paint drops and make them bleed and others will just land where there's already paint and create some lighter dots. And you can do this over and over and over again. Oops. Until you're happy. Okay. There. So I'm gonna leave mine like that because I kind of like the way it looks. You're gonna wanna let this dry. Okay, and when it's all dry, we're gonna clean up our blue. We don't want any of the blue paint. Um, just seal the little containers, put them someplace that will be useful for you to use later. Okay, and we're gonna use our orange paint for our next one. So you wanna make sure that this is dried. You've waited patiently for it to dry. Okay, and if you have to pause it, it's a good idea just to pause it and come back. This is a project you could do over the course of a few days if you wanted to, or you could just do it all in one day and take some breaks. Okay. I'm kind of liking all of these really cool bleeding patterns, really cool stuff. I said I was done, but I think I'm gonna just keep adding some more water. Okay. Now when it comes to working with your orange, if you look at this painting, you'll notice I've got some bright red areas, I've got some really nice orange areas, and then I have some lighter areas here, as well as some white, okay? Now do you guys remember I gave you a little bit of white paint for your hedgehog project? Hopefully you have a little bit left, because we'll need it for in here. It won't take very much, okay? Um, and the end of the tail. but. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna work with our orange. And with our orange, I'll show you, this is the brightest the orange can get. Let's see where I wanna put some of this orange. So I'm gonna start at the tail. I'm gonna go at the bottom of the tail. Okay, and you'll notice that some of that blue bled into my tail and I'm not really worried too much. Okay, now there's the orange. Now I'm gonna wash my brush, get it nice and clean and use just the paint that's on the canvas to blend upwards. And notice how it gets a little lighter? Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll start with a nice brush full of orange paint along the bottom. I'll dry it off. And then I'll blend, blend, blend upwards so it's a little lighter. Okay, and I'll do that one more time to finish the tail. And if you don't like how bright it is, give it a moment to dry and we can touch it up again, okay? So you'll see what I'll do with that. I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna go down all the way down our fox's back. Okay, I'm gonna wash that brush, dry it off a little bit. And same thing, I'm gonna spread out the paint that's already on the canvas a little bit further. And that's how we lighten things up, okay? Now in here, I think I'd like them to be very orange. Okay, so I put in a lot of paint on top of them. And I'm just gonna let that dry. And while that's drying, I'm just gonna paint in some other areas. And notice I'm not necessarily trying to just paint in one tiny little area at a time, like I'm coloring a coloring book. I'm just painting in wherever I think it would be fun to add this orange. Okay, now once you have all the areas that you want bright orange, what you can do is wash your brush really well. Take just water on your brush and add in just water wherever you think you want it to be a little lighter. Okay, so you're gonna use just a little bit of water. Then you're gonna take a small hint of paint, okay, just a little bit. Because you've already put water on there, your painting is going to soak up 
the water before it soaks up the paint. So you get something a little lighter. Okay. I'm going to just come back to this area here because that blue doesn't look very nice. But we'll just blend it over and let it bleed. Okay, it's getting orangery, more orange and more orange as time goes by. Okay, and you're just going to fill things in. So I haven't filled in the little donuts yet, but I would like to fill them in lightly. So I'm gonna use some water, but I don't wanna do that until after the circles in the middle are dry, because that'll make them bleed. Remember how I mentioned that before? They're starting to bleed already, but I can use that to my advantage. I can just paint around them. Awesome. Same thing. I probably don't even need to get anything on my brush. Okay, and we'll spread it out some more. Okay. Nice and bright. Nice and bright. Okay. And once that dries, I'm going to go back to the tail a little bit, add another layer. And just add things up until it's bright and beautiful the way you want it to look. Okay. Something like that. Now, whenever you're like, I like this, I don't want to touch it, that's good. You're going to take that orange and you're going to drag it along the bottom underneath the fox's bum so that it looks like the fox is sitting on something. Okay? And you might think, well, but now the fox is the same color as the dirt. Well, kind of, until we start mixing that blue and that orange together because they'll mix together. And I can even take a little dab of my blue. There we go, look at that. Notice the color? Do you remember when I was mixing our orange color, I said there were 30 drops of yellow and only three drops of red? So our orange color is very much yellow based and blue and yellow mixed together make green blue and orange mixed together make brown. So you might get a combination of the two colors depending on how you mix them together. But either way, it'll create a really nice spot for your fox to sit and enjoy whatever it is they're looking at. Okay. Now another option that you could do for your sky is take a little bit of this orange and see this, I made these beautiful beautiful little stars. So you can take some of that orange and you can just do little dots. Okay, just do some dots wherever you think they look good. If you want to go around them in circles, you absolutely can do kind of like a Van Gogh style. That's okay with me. Okay, my background is still a little bit wet, so you'll notice it'll bleed a little bit. I'm totally okay with that. Now the final part you're going to want to get that little container of white paint that you had used uh, in your kit. It's for the hedgehog, but you only need a tiny little drop to do this. And we're using white acrylic paint for this because it covers up everything better. It's thick. Okay, so this is where things kind of get touched up. So I'm gonna paint in the bearded area of the fox. Now, you might notice it's a little bit light blue still. That's okay. Either you can leave it because you like it that way, 
or you can decide to just let this paint dry and do a second coat. Whatever you decide to do is cool with me. And then I'm gonna use the back of my brush, just a little dot, and I'm gonna put a little dot in the eye and make a little shine on the nose, okay? I'm also going to use the white to just fill in that little tail. Okay, and if you accidentally paint over any of these lines, it's no big deal because when you're done, you can just use your marker when the paint is dry to just go over anything that looks like it needs some touching up. So like right here, I would touch it up a little bit. But otherwise, I think I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. Okay. See, and then I can come along. Make some ground for my fox. If you wanna make some scribbles for a shadow, you absolutely can. You wanna add some rocks, you can. Whatever you think looks good, okay? those fun little stars. They're just growing and growing. Okay. And when you're all done, make sure you sign your little painting, either on the back or the front. I'd recommend just doing a little signature in the corner. Um, using your marker when the painting is dry is probably the best and easiest idea. Um, but take your time and if there's anything else you want to add to your painting by all means go for it it's just like any other class that I've taught you I highly encourage you to do something crazy like put squirrels in the tail um, if you want to do a more elaborate background by all means go for it you could get a little bit creative and mix some of your custom green and make some bushes in the background if you want it it's totally up to you I'm just here to help you learn how to do some of these things yourself. Um, you can also go ahead, see how I've got some dots, dots and things. You can go back and do some extra tiny details in your fox if you'd like to, but you don't have to. Um, what I also did was use some markers and added some other details over top. So if you wanna get really creative and you're really into this, um, just go ahead and use some markers Usually I use either a dark orange or a bright red, and you can add in some detail work on top, okay? So I'll just show you, the tail's dry now, so I'm just gonna retouch up the tail, okay? And that's all there is to it, my friends. So I hope that you had a fun time learning how to draw my natural magic fox. And I would love to be able to see what your paintings turned out like. So if you'd like to send me a picture, please send me a picture. Um, you can send me a picture through Instagram. You can tag me at Barracks by the Grand. You could tag me on Facebook at LVW Creative Barracks. Or you can just send me an inbox message. That's fine too. Um, I hope that you had fun. And I encourage all of you to do this more than once. Try it with markers. Try it with pencil crayons. Color it in, try different things, experiment. Show me all your experiments. Thanks so much guys, I hope you have fun and I'll see you in July.